going to talk about geometric formulas. These are the kind of things that you see around in everyday life, and we're going to be talking about mathematical abstractions of these things. We're going to talk about squares, rectangles, parallelograms. And we're going to talk about the formulas that relate these things, that let you do calculations based on these things. Now, we're all familiar with formulas. It's a mathematical description of some procedure. It, I think of them as a recipe. And it's a shorthand notation for doing something in mathematics, often making some kind of a calculation. For example, you want to find out how much stuff will fit inside a box. There's a formula for it. You want to find out um, if you have a certain temperature in Fahrenheit degrees, what that temperature is in Celsius or centigrade degrees. There's a formula, a mathematical description that you use to do the translation or to do the calculation. So we're going to look at some formulas that deal with these different geometrical figures. The first formula we'll talk about is perimeter, and that's the distance around an object. So really what I envision in my head in this case is taking a walk around an object like this. We'll start here, and then as we walk around, we'll add up how far we've walked. So we've walked 7 inches. We've walked a total of 7 plus 6, or 13 inches. Another 7 gives us 20 inches. Another 6 gives us 26 inches. And another 5, having walked all the way around this object, gives us 31 inches. So the perimeter of an object is the distance around the object. So whenever you see the word perimeter, think of taking a walk and going around something. The next thing we can talk about, and we've talked about this with cheese and some other examples in the past, is the area. And that's a measure of how much surface area an object takes up. Then we can talk about the volume of an object. That's how much three-dimensional space an object occupies. Um, how much air it pushes apart, or if you put it in water, how much water it forces apart. It's the space you have, and you know we're filling up this square, and volume is typically measured in units cubed, and you'll see why. Now let's take a look at some of the definitions for these things. First, a square, and this is a figure having four equal sides and four right angles so that each side of a square has the length s or whatever. But the idea is that each side of a square has, is equivalent, has the same size. So the area is the length times the width, which is s squared. So for example, in this case, 3 feet by 3 feet is 9, you can't just leave that, it's 9 feet squared. Now if we talk about the perimeter, that also is pretty straightforward. Remember, it's the distance around the sides on the outside. So it's s plus s plus s plus s as you go around. And it's four times whatever the length of the side is for a square. And of course, if we could calculate it in this particular case, and we see that the distance around is 12 feet. Now, going from a square to a rectangle, we generalize one step more. A square is a four-sided figure having right angles at each corner. So, for example, in my, um, I just happen to have brought here uh, something I found, I hate to say this, in the dumpster, but this box that I'm looking at you through is a rectangle, more or less, because it has right angles here, two opposite sides having the same si length, and two sides here having the same length. Let's look at the generalizations on the slide. So here's a rectangle, 3 feet by 4 feet. And the area then is the length times the width, or 3 times 4 is 12 square feet. And we can talk about the perimeter of a rectangle, which is the length 
plus the width plus the length plus the width, or we can add the length and the width together and get twice the length plus twice the width. And in the case of this particular object with three feet and four feet, we find that the perimeter is 14 square feet. Now, we're going to deal with another figure called a parallelogram. And I can illustrate that with my box as I start here with a rectangle and I mush it a little bit. And you notice that the two opposite sides, top and bottom, right and left, stay parallel to each other, but we've relaxed the 90 degrees. So you can have various degrees of parallelograms. And in fact, a square is, or a rectangle is nothing more than a particular case of a parallelogram. Anyway, let's take a look at the parallelogram. So here's one with a height, and the height is the distance from the base up to the top, straight up and down, not the length of the side. And the way we can see that is suppose we um, took that triangle that's on the right, moved it to the left, you see we can transform a parallelogram into a rectangle where the width of the rectangle would be b and the, high, and the length of the rectangle would be h. So finding the area of a parallelogram is the base or the length along the bottom of the parallelogram times the height, the distance between top and bottom straight up and down, not along the side. So here's a parallelogram and we can get the area, in this case the area of our parallelogram is 12 square feet. Then we can talk about the perimeter or of the parallelogram. Again, you just walk around the sides now, and so the perimeter of our parallelogram is 18 feet. Next we can talk about formulas related to three-dimensional objects, boxes more formally called prisms, having a length, width, and a height. And you can see that boxes are made up of tiny blocks. And the volume is the height times the width times the length. Or we can express it as a simple formula, height times width times length. So let's calculate um, the volume of a box. So here is a particular box, 2 meters by 4 meters by 3 meters. And I multiply that together and get 24, and notice I have cubic meters, meters cubed. Let's look at an example of a problem using these kinds of formulas. A parallelogram has an area of 27 square feet. If its base is 9, what is its height? Okay, so we identify the information and we find out what we're asked. We're looking for the height of the parallelogram and we know the base and we also know the area. So, the area is 27 square feet, the base is 9, we need to know the height. So we have the information, we remember that the area is the base times the height, so we have 9 times the height is equal to 27 square feet. We remember we have an equation for which we can divide both sides by 9, and we find out that the height is 3 feet. This concludes the information that we are dealing with in this unit.